Good morning. It's Wednesday, which is our Friday, which means buckle up. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run yes, it happy Wednesday morning. Yeah, yeah. This is Run It Back. I would like to go through the panel here um, before we get a magic mic review very quickly from Chandler. Stadium insider Sham Sharania right next to me over here or over here. I would be a horrible weather person. Chandler, of course, there at Eddie G on the end. Chandler, thumbs up, thumbs down. Magic Mike, the latest. Yeah, listen, I, it's a really bad movie, but it's an easy watch. And, I, and I'll admit it. I was wildly aroused at some points of this movie. <laughs> and clip that. Thank you so much. We're going to use that for the rest of our lives. I appreciate that you went. Uh, there was... There was basketball last night. Some good, some not good. But let's start with King's Sun. Suns beating Sacramento, 120, 109. Booker with 32, Aiton with 29. CP3 with 19 assists. KD was there. Everybody was loving it. He was on the bench. Um, all right. Chemistry concerns. This has been a flip floppy season for this Phoenix team, Chandler. Do you think that now that KD is there, that's all settled? It's going to be a grace period where they're going to obviously have to acclimate their new best player into the lineup. And guys like Chris Paul, they're used to playing with stars. DeAndre Ayton's never really been a number one option since he's been in the league. Devin Booker, I think it's going to have to be his biggest adjustment. He's never had a player like Kevin Durant. But on the flip side, this is a relief. This is a breath of fresh air. You, you, you love this if you're Devin Booker, right? Like you want to add talent. You want to add someone that can get the ball and go get a bucket. And the Suns do have a lot to look forward to with Kevin Durant coming back to the lineup, with Devin Booker healthy uh, and starting to play really, really well, with DeAndre Ayton kind of dominating down low. Chris Paul last night, guy had 19 assists. <laughs> this is a great version of this team. And they still have guys like Campaign that are out. And Landry Shamet, who was absolutely balling before he went out. So, again, this is a time will tell, kind of, you know, wait and see KD in the lineup and give him a few games and give him some time. But this is a super dangerous lineup, especially with Aiton and Chris Paul playing the way they did last night. Because you know what you're going to get from KD. You know what you're going to get from, from Devin. But when you start getting 19 points from Josh Okoge and you start getting Shamet or Shamet hitting three or four threes, this team is very, very dangerous. Eddie, I, I want to ask you this because it's – and tell me if I'm crazy here, but there are certain guys – for example, when we put Kyrie on another team, I, I'm thinking, all right, chemistry could be weird. Let's see. I don't think that with KD. Why is that? I do not worry about chemistry no matter where he goes, and there has to be a reason, and I cannot put my finger on it. Tell me. Well, I mean, it's just like his Twitter bio says. He does him and he chills, but, it, you know, everybody understands his skill set. He's the most – malleable superstar we, maybe we've ever had in the league you could just slot him right into that to that to that team and he's gonna hit open shots he's gonna occupy the correct space and he's gonna play hard defense for a superstar what more can you ask for he's gonna do that and, and score 30 points a game at incredible efficiency uh you know i have no chemistry concerns personality wise Kevin loves Chris Paul. Kevin and Book bonded over the Olympics. He got a dog that's just like Book's dog and all this great <laughs> stuff. He clearly wanted to be there. He's he said they they pretty much everybody's just admitted that he's wanted to be there and it, and it worked out. Hmm. I think DeAndre Ayton is an interesting outlier, but basketball is going to be easier for him than it's ever been in his career right now because he's going to be singled up every night. He's going to have great looks and 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 he's just the, it's going to be his oyster now. For Kevin, I, I do wonder a little bit about Book and Kevin occupying that same mid-range space. They can't both sit on each elbow, and they'll have to figure that out. But those guys, they get it. I mean, Booker came off the bench for a mega team in Kentucky. He knows how to play amongst other talents as well. And uh, I think they're going to be fine on the offensive side. The defensive side is what intrigues me so much. And when you have a guy like Josh Okogie or Torrey Craig, they both started last night. Everybody's wondering who's going to be the starter when Kevin's there. It's going to help shore up their defense a ton. I'm excited to see this team at full strength. Yeah, I mean, Chris Paul, 17 points, 19 assists last night. Like, that's the Chris Paul that they need. And it's it's interesting to me. They went all throughout this season. We all thought that they would try to make an upgrade at some point. 
But as the year went on, the guy that a lot of teams and, and even the Suns were looking at internally was Chris Paul and his future. Next year, he's got half of his deal guaranteed. So what happens with Chris Paul long term is something that we all have to continue to keep our eye on. They did look into Kyrie Irving this year before making the KD trade. They looked into Fred Van Vliet this year. So they, they've already made it kind of clear that whether it's it's next, you know, in the offseason, next season, they could look to move on at the point guard position. But for right now, Chris Paul is going to man that spot. And if he plays like he did last night, and, and if he looks like he's got that much left in the tank, he, he stays injury-free, he could be the best guy to lead this team moving forward. Uh, but that is definitely a position to continue to keep an eye on and, and how does it develop over the course of the year. Because to me, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, I think they'll figure it out at the end of the day. It's crazy. Like, I'm telling you, CP, I never thought he would have a chance, a real chance, a championship. It feels all of a sudden like a different world, Chandler. Throw away the standings. I know where everybody sits right now out west. But if you had to pick the best team, the best team that's equipped moving forward, would you pick this Suns team? Not yet. I'm going to have to see more, but they are going to be really, really hard to, to beat four times in the postseason. I'm still high on Denver, and I'm super high on the Clippers, especially with the additions mm. they just made at the deadline. I love the Clippers, and I don't think they're done yet. I think they're going to add some other point guard uh, and some more help. But listen, this team, like we just talked about, I think DeAndre Ayton really is going to benefit from this because now there's no way he's getting double teamed down low. There's no way they're rotating to him. They're going to have two elite scores on the wing, and they're going to have one of the best point guards of all time facilitating getting them in their offense and deandre ayton is going to have his field day on the glass one-on-one -on -one in the post and i think his game is really going to blossom with the addition of kevin durant but I, I, they still have to show us something in my eyes listen this is not just gonna it's not just gonna work all of a sudden it's gonna take time it's gonna take reps and um i'm not doubting it but i, I just got to see a little bit more before i crown them as the best team I just love that DeAndre Ayton's reaction was about the same as all of ours. <laughs> like, exact kind of surprise <laughs> and, and happiness, it looks like. Uh, Eddie, million-dollar question. Is KD going to finish things out in Phoenix? <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I think he'll finish his contract. I don't think he really has the luxury of continuing to jump around. I, I don't say that because there's not a loyalty to that team where he's already looking for a way out or anything. Please don't run with that. But no. I think Kevin's going to have a really long career, and he could play 20 years, and he could be a six-man off the bench making $15 million and just hitting open threes. Like I, I, I talk about this with him all the time. I think he's going to play a really long time, and then he's going to go coach. And, and I, I, so I could see him playing for – the Seattle team that may eventually come at 42 years old and just being a guy off the bench. Uh, that's the only reason why. But I do think he's going to sustain this run for as long as he can in Phoenix, and he's bought in all the way. And, and, and for the reason I said, like, there's only so much jumping around he can do. I think he understands that. I think that's just the reality of the situation. Can't keep asking for trades every season. So uh, he'll be there long term is what I'll say. Finish his okay. career? I don't know. Uh, people do like to retire to the desert. That is a prime destination for that. On the other side of thing, the Kings, um, we know what kind of season they've been having. And last night, look, D Fox had 35 points. Sabonis had 24, 15, and 7. Um, but firepower-wise, those are two guys, Chandler. Do they have enough to really, really make a push come playoff time? No, I don't think so, which is unfortunate because they're such a fun, exciting team and they're doing a lot of things right. But if you look at these standings right here, first round, they could get stuck with Dallas or the Clippers or the Warriors in the first round, which that's even tough for them to even advance, let alone compete in the Western Conference. Hmm. So I think they could get a good, you know, they could end up with New Orleans or something like that that's banged up. And I think they could advance. Um, but I don't even think that matters with them. I think they are such on the right path now. They hired a great coach. They added great pieces around these two stars, and they're only going to get better. And this isn't like a one-and-done playoffs for the Sacramento Kings. So in my opinion, regardless if they advance, if they don't, this is a hell of a year for the Sacramento Kings. They are back, and they are going to be competing for the next three to five years while they keep this young core. But this year is tough. I think it's too deep. Uh, I don't think they're uh, – how good out in the West. All right. <laughs> Famous yeah. words. 16 year yeah. drought. I think I think Kings fans like Eddie G are gonna take a playoff berth at the very right. least. But Who I, I think you know, when, when you look at this team, they've got a lot of assets moving forward as well. There there was a sense even leading up to the deadline, how active will the Kings be? They have Harrison Barnes on an expiring contract. I'm sure they're gonna look to bring him back in the summer, just in terms of how important he's been to their culture and the fabric of what they're building. But you, we should continue to look at the Kings as a team that's 
like Chandler said, they don't have the firepower maybe right now, but they have the ability. Monty McNair, Wes Wilcox, they have the assets there to go get real significant talent in the offseason and moving forward. So uh, m maybe not yet, but this team is definitely building and, and I'm sure making Kings fans proud. Yeah, I usually say, hey, getting there, just getting there isn't enough. But I think for this particular franchise, the longest playoff drought in the four major professional sports in the U.S., it <laughs> is. Just getting there will be just enough. And if they can, if they can win a game, it'll be incredible. It'll be a major moment for that franchise. Their first playoff games in that new arena. Their first playoff games in the Vivek Ranadive era. And, yeah, I think it's going to be great. And like Sam said, they're built for the future. They're built to continue to add to that roster. And they have a ton of pieces. So you have your you have your cornerstones right now, De'Aaron Fox, Demonis Sabonis, and you go from there. Even with Keegan Murray, you heard his name a little bit at the trade deadline too. Great, talented rookie, but that, that's also could fetch you a, quite a nice haul on the open market as well. So I'm with Shams. Getting there is going to be great, and then they can focus on the future after that. Yeah, I like it because they're not just fizzling in. Like, they're going to get there very strongly and i think that's kind of an awesome move forward normally i'm agree with you but yeah this is a big deal all right chandler the team that you mentioned earlier los clippers beating the warriors 134 124 Kawhi, 33 7 4 pg 20 and eight assists uh trade deadline came and went how much better did they get i think they made the biggest jump and obviously the, the trade assets were great right eric gordon is a seasoned vet who can really shoot the ball we know bones highland can really score the ball off the bench and especially in this system where they have a lot of players in the, in the system that is catered to you know iso off the block post ups and this is exactly what these guys do they can space the floor they can knock them down but the clippers are only going to go as far as Kawhi leonard and paul george and those guys seem to be healthy they seem to be happy and this is the best I've seen Kawhi Leonard look in a really, really long time. And he looks strong and he's getting to his spots. Uh, Norman Powell, to me, is the sixth man of the year. This guy has really had a heck of a year scoring, kind of carrying that load when one of these two guys are off the court. And now they just got a lot of backup. They added size with Plumlee. They're young. Defensively, I think they have the capability of being the best team where they can they can switch. They have a legit big in Zubox. They don't really have many holes. And again, I would love to see them add Patrick Beverly. I'd love to see them add Russell Westbrook because the only thing I'm seeing missing, they don't really have a pure point guard. And neither of those two are really pure point guards, but they can at least initiate the offense. They can get everyone in their sets. They can kind of run a team. But I like them with or without those guys, but I think they definitely made the biggest jump and the biggest splash by adding two real starters on, on most teams to their to their bench. You know, Shams, I haven't just heard talking heads mention the Russell Westbrook to the Clippers. Now we've got multiple players that are actually very much in full support of him joining the team. Um, any is it a possibility? Could this actually happen? I mean, I, I think there are definitely players on league that like Russell Westbrook a lot, like the Clippers guys. I have not heard any traction yet, though, with mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook and the Clippers. Lawrence Frank, uh, their their head basketball operations official, he said that he he wants defense shooting from the position um so i i don't know if if, if russ fits that but um you know when you look at teams around the league there there is not a spot yet for russell westbrook um he's still with the utah jazz the jazz have until march one to decide whether they're going to buy out russell westbrook from his contract to make him playoff eligible and i would expect him to take the next week or so to figure out whether he can find a home somewhere else um i, I do believe if, if he had a home by now the jazz would have bought him out and allowed him to go seek another team. Um, but right now, they're just, it, it, it's, it's a slow moving market, and we'll see if Russell Westbrook will be able to find a home. You know, Eddie, some people are reading into that Lawrence Frank quote as though it was him just basically saying, We're not in the Russell Westbrook business at this moment. Do you think he'd be a good fit there? I think it would be interesting. You know, I agree with Chandler and Shams. They they do need a point guard, they do need somebody to facilitate. When you watch that team, it's a ton of ISO ball, it's a ton of driving and then pulling up for jumpers instead of getting to the paint. Um, you know, guys aren't really necessarily getting assisted, especially the two big fellas, PG and Kawhi. Whether he's a perfect fit there, I don't know. I don't know that he would slot into that role and be a Michael Conley, a Ricky Rubio, and just kind of looking to get guys in their spots. Russ, to me, is always going to play Russ ball. And on certain teams, that's <laughs> going to work. I don't know if this is one of those teams. I do think they need some point guard help. I, I did think it was fascinating that – uh, Ty Lue came out and said Bones is a point guard on this team. 
they know they need point guard help. And, and when they get into the playoffs and it gets tougher and tougher to create shots, they're going to have to rely on somebody to set their guys up. Look, they have a ton of wings. They have a ton of defensive wings. They're the team that worries me most for the Suns. But they're also going to have to get buckets on the other end. And that's not to say Kawhi can't. He looks amazing. PG looks amazing. <laughs> but you want to make it a little bit easier on those guys wherever you can. That's, that's one advantage I think the Suns have over the Clippers is Chris Paul is going to find shots for KD and Devin Booker. He's going to get them in their spots. He's going to get them open. He's going to, he's going to break down defenses and, and, and find layups for people. And uh, the, the Clippers are going to need those easy buckets when the games get tougher. And a positive, too, is Russ just showed that he's willing to come off the bench. And he just we yep. talked about him being sixth man of the year. Uh, and he was in, you know, kind of that shitstorm next door with the Lakers all year long. And he still had a really, <laughs> really good year. And he had to adjust. And he's been kind of, you know, put through the ringer. And, and he's he's had a great season. And I'll tell you this. I saw him last night at the John Legend concert. So he's still in L.A. He has his Obviously. family here. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't want to leave. He would he would love to just go right next door to the Clippers on a better team, a contending team, and have that same yes. role on the bench. So uh, I would love it. I think he's – obviously he's healthy and he's went through so much that this would almost just – this would be easier just to go to the Clippers and play and have not even that much pressure on a buyout. It makes perfect sense to me. I'd love to see it happen. I want to talk Warriors, but I, hold on. We started Valentine's Day, Chandler, with you forgetting it was Valentine's Day. How many things did y'all do yesterday? A, uh, we did it all. I'm a romantic. I was going to figure it out. I just delayed it a little bit, and I figured it I feel, out. I feel like you had way more hours in your day than the rest of us. You did like 97 things in one day. I really did. It was a hell of a day. Well done. Well done, yeah. sir. Um, all right, look, on the Warriors side, it's now, what, February 15th. We're all waiting for the light switch to kick back on. I, I don't know. Is it happening? Jordan Poole, 28 points. Clay, though, 19. It was his first appearance on night two of a back-to-back. -back. Steve Kerr, we have reinforcements coming. They got a lot to look forward to. They've lost a lot of games they should have won, he said. And he knows that they're still, quote, right there. Okay. It is now playoffs, Chandler. Who do you trust more, Clippers or the Warriors in a series? I like the Clippers, Let's just presume honestly, everyone's back, listen, too. But, Steve, okay. but oh, Steve Kerr is right. He's got a lot of points, and they have been in a lot of games. And it's hard to judge this team without Steph Curry in the lineup. As good as these other guys are, their team is him. And they're like the Clippers and Kawhi and Paul George, they're only going to go as far as Steph Curry. Um, and, and again, it's February 15th, and somehow, some way, I'm still not worried about this team. <laughs> uh, but and they're going to add guys like Peyton. Steph's going to be back. Wiggins is going to be back fully. And these games are huge games for Clay Thompson. Let me tell you something. This guy went through so much stuff with his injury, with his rehab, and every single game he gets out there and he plays 20 plus minutes and he's shooting five to 10 threes. Those are such valuable reps for him to get for his body, for his knees, for his confidence. Um, and they're only obviously going to get better when they are fully loaded with, you know, Iguodala, Peyton, Steph, all these guys back. So I think this is valuable reps. And I think Steve Kerr does have a good point that they have. They're, they're right there. And let me tell you something, whoever ends up one or two, they do not want to see the Warriors in the first round. So I think they're still in a good spot, but the clock is ticking a little bit because all these other teams are getting reps, they're getting better, uh, and the Warriors are still kind of in and out of guys in rotations, and it's taking a lot longer than we expected. Eduardo. This is me crossing my fingers, hoping that the Warriors make a run, and we can have Clippers, Warriors, in round one. I would need one of these teams eliminated before the Phoenix Suns have to play them. I don't want them to have to play both of them. Uh, both of these teams are dangerous. I actually think the Warriors, I trust them more. They just won the title. They're missing right. their best player, and they were neck and neck with the Clippers last night. And, and you know, a late run ended up deciding the game. I, I trust the Warriors. They've been there. They've done it. They've won four titles in nine years, and they could have won more. They, they lost another one because their best player tore his Achilles. They lost another one for the greatest comeback of all time. Th this is a literal dynasty where right in the middle of they've just had the injury bug this year. If they can get healthy just in time, they're fine, and, and they will be fine, and they know they'll be fine, and, and they know how they're going to handle that, but they have to get there. As crazy as it sounds, look, they're, they're the nine seed, right? Yep, nine seed. They're only three games out of the play, <laughs> like to get out of the play, to be the sixth seed. They could absolutely be the four and five seed by the end of this season. They just need to make a run. They need to get Steph Curry back, but – that's not up to them. He, he's got to heal up, and they're going to need that. they got to tread water till then. This has been the story of their whole season. 
And yep. once they get stepped back, wrap them in bubble wrap, keep them healthy because you're going to need them to win these games and have to make a run. But I trust them. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's weird. It doesn't feel like it's a dead end yet. And it's really late in the season. Um, the game last night flipped on the TV, Celtics Bucks. We thought, oh, Celtics had no one playing. Uh, Drew Holiday with 40 points leading his team to an overtime win. Uh, 131, 125. We will talk Bucks first, Chandler. Um, when when Drew is doing what he's doing in these videos right here in front of you, how dangerous is this team? Super dangerous. And and again, this is a team that was super depleted. This game shouldn't have been close, but this just shows <laughs> you Drew Holiday his value. This shows why he's an all star. Him making eight threes, him making those huge defensive plays at the end of the game. They have such a balanced attack that when they are getting points like this from from Drew Holiday and Grayson Allen and Pat Connaughton and Bobby Portis. We know what we're going to get pretty much from Giannis and and Chris Middleton has been up and down, but no doubt in my mind he's going to figure it out. But when you get guys like this having 40 and still defending at the level that they defend, it's a hard team to beat. And we all know when when their star guys come out, I knew that the Celtics weren't just going to lay down right here. You knew these guys, this is their chance. We made a joke about Blake Griffin having over under 11 and a half points. Like, he had, <laughs> like guys, guys, when their number is called, they want to step up. But this Bucks team, uh, they hang their head on the defensive end and they have one of the best players in the league. Uh, they're such a safe pick. They're so solid. But again, kudos to the Celtics because they were missing pretty much all their guys and they were right here and could have won this game. Yeah, this was a great game. I mean, Look, I thought Gordon Hayward hit a, hit a major shot to send that game into overtime. It wasn't Gordon Hayward. It was Sam Hauser. But no. The yeah, me the too. I did the same thing. Showed... <laughs> <laughs> they, I said, yo, did he get bought out? But they showed their resilience. I mean, it, look, they shot 53s. This is the style of play the Celtics are going to play. They're going to spread out. They're going to kick it around the horn. They're going to shoot threes all night. They, they don't care. But missing basically their entire starting lineup and hanging with the number two team in the East – there's no moral victories. I understand. But, yo, you can hang your hat a little bit on that game. Uh, all their guys stepped up, like like Chandler said. Blake Griffin stepped up. These are guys are going to call for in playoff minutes. It might just be in a second quarter in a random game three. Or you might need them for a series as somebody's injured, but they're going to call for these guys. But the Bucks are scary. They stepped up late. They handled business in overtime. And, you know, the Sam Hauser, Gordon Hayward heroics couldn't get, push the Celtics over the top. But that was a really fun game. A game I dismissed when I saw the injury report right? and ended up peeking at. It, and it couldn't help but stick there and, and finish that game. I mean, Derek White, he's Eastern Conference Player of the Week. He had some moments, too, especially towards the end as we're getting close to the overtime. I told you guys, the NBA's drunk this season. Just because no one's playing in a game does not mean something crazy is going to happen. If you're if you're Tatum, if you're Brown, if you're smart and you're watching this, how, how much better did you sleep last night? Yeah, a loss is a loss, but what did you see, Chandler? Well, it's just good. Like we said, there's not really silver lining and, and a team's loss, but there is in a loss like this. When when you have Tatum, Brown, Horford, Smart out, these guys, the coaching staff, everybody now has a little bit more confidence in Hausers, in Mike Muscala's, in these guys that aren't necessarily getting the reps when they're fully loaded. And it's huge to be able to know that these guys can play with the Milwaukee Bucks pretty much fully fully loaded without Portis. Uh, that is a huge vote of confidence. And again, like Eddie just touched on, there's going to come a time later in the season. Maybe it's one possession. Maybe it's one quarter. Maybe it's one series. But one of these guys that came up big in this game last night are going to play a huge role in their postseason. And it's going to be a, you know, it's, it's going to be a breaking point where they can either come through and they can make a big play or make a big stop. And games like this are such valuable, valuable experiences where, again, the Celtics went into this game. We didn't think they were going to win. The general manager didn't think they were going to win. The team did not think they were going to win this game. But the fact that they played this hard and put themselves in the chance to win is huge and just gives them a whole other found level of respect and confidence for these guys that were ready to play when their number was called. It seems like Milwaukee's just been coasting all year, right? Like Giannis in and out of the lineup. Chris Middleton was out of the lineup for a really long time. Drew Holiday's been in and out of the lineup at times. And yet they're a half game back of the Celtics. They have a chance to get the number one seed this year after everything that's happened. And Boston, like, yeah, they competed really hard without their top guys. Uh, you can definitely take solace in that. But to me, it is very interesting that Milwaukee is suddenly in position right now to get the number one seed in the East. What does that mean for Giannis' MVP candidacy when he's been looking up at Boston 
pretty much all year. He leads the NBA in 30-10 games. Drew Holiday, career high 40 last night. That's crazy. 40 points, career high. Uh, 11 straight wins for the Bucks. Like they're going into the All-Star break, riding on all cylinders, um, and I think they're a team to watch. If they get the number one seed, do we open up the MVP again? Is Giannis in in play? Like I think those are all very good questions. And that's all with Middleton still with a restriction, right? I think it's like he hits 25 points, he comes out, no matter what's going on. Even last night, it was close, and he was pulled. So uh, to me, that's that's actually very optimistic. Um, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, Shams with the latest on James Harden's new agent and a new spur, officially official. We'll run it back. Welcome back to Run It Back. Time to get some scoops with Shams. There's some hiring going on yesterday by James Harden Shams. Got a new agent? Yeah, so James Harden can be a free agent in July. And I'm told he has changed agents. He's hired a new agent. Troy Payne, the former executive uh, at Adidas, uh, he's going to be his agent along with uh, partnering with Mike Silverman, Brandon Greer, who, are, who have been NBA agents for, for quite some time now. So this is an interesting development because James Harden is, is, has a player option for the summertime. He could be a free agent. He's had a bounce back here this year. 22 points per game, 11 assists, league leading, six rebounds. Uh, thir- he's shooting 39% from three, as high as since 2011, 2012. So James Harden is starting to make moves and maneuver uh, for the offseason, for post career. Um, I'm curious, Chandler, your thoughts on a player at the age of 33 right now making moves like this? Yeah, this is, I think to me, this is just him putting his boys on. And, and I love this. This is exactly what I tried to do my entire career with, with my guys. And he's obviously in a whole different level, but. It's a smart move. The market kind of is going to play itself out with him in free agency. Someone's going to pay him. He doesn't really need an agent to really hammer and negotiate his value. People know who he is and his value now. So I love this. Maybe this is him starting his own agency when he's done, you know, putting his people on. But now this is a great way to get his people reps, experience, known, um, you know, doing James Harden's next big deal is going to bring attention for him to sign other younger guys. Uh, so I love it. Again, he hasn't had an agent since Palenka, and, and why not hire one of your boys and maybe do this post-career? Is it 3% commission, Chandler, on those big ones? It's, it could be whatever you negotiate, but I think it's 4% mm-hmm. at the top, but none of the big guys <laughs> ever play, pay 4%. <laughs> okay, good to know. Fair enough. Um, so <laughs> it is some interesting. I know, right? I'm like, oh, it's still, it's still it's a lot. Uh, Mac McClung. The G League kid, the kid that's going to be in the slam dunk contest. He got some good news yesterday. Shams, what's up? Yeah, you know, interesting timing. I don't know if Eddie or Chandler has any <laughs> conspiracy theories here, but uh, they announced <laughs> Mac McClung officially into the dunk contest yesterday. And that's the same day he agreed and signed a two-way contract with the Sixers. And listen, this is, this is well-reserved. He's, he's averaged almost 20 points a game in the G League. 50% from three. He's had a pretty good season. Look look at these moves. Like, these moves, like, he's going to have a couple of viral moments in the dunk contest, as, as tough as it might be for some people to, to hear and see. It's, it is um, tough. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, very, very curious timing on on, on this deal for, for Mac McClung. You know, I, I know Eddie had some thoughts. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I have to take back all my slander. I have to call Kevin no, and let don't. him know he gets to take all his slander back. No. Uh, if he plays in the game on Thursday, I, my bad, Mac. You you did it. You're in the you're in the dunk contest. Uh, he's gonna wear a 76ers jersey, I guess. And well, cool. <laughs> like bring Shade and Sharp well, back, please. Well, please. hold on, because there is a conspiracy. Like this is a little odd on the timing. Is the league worried that if this kid had won the slam dunk contest without being quote unquote an NBA player, it would poop all over the slam dunk contest? Is that how I'm reading this? Or the opposite. If he's absolutely horrible, they're like, why did we put this G League <laughs> in the NBA? So I think it works both ways. Oh, there is no evidence of yeah, that, Michelle, because, because he, he mm. would have been in the dunk contest regardless. Like He was going to be the first G League player, and technically he was the first G League do- player to ever accept an invitation to the NBA dunk contest. Uh, but coach. yeah, I mean, the, the timing is interesting on the day of the announcement, but he would have been in the dunk contest regardless. <laughs> The best thing that can happen oh, for this kid is him bang on somebody and actually play on the 76ers before yeah. the break. That would justify a little bit at least for me. <laughs> Look, if, Wait, if they, Philly uh, well, gets the next yeah. great 
foreign overseas game, the Paris game or the Madrid game or whatever is the next one, just remember that this happened. Just remember they did the league a favor here. And, and look, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I just, yeah, it was it was interesting timing. I agree with you on that. And uh, right here, San Antonio Spurs, Shams. I like this story. Share it with the world, will you? Your Spurs are signing Charles Bassey <laughs> to a four-year, $10.2 million deal. $5.2 million of that is guaranteed. This is a guy that came in Whee! on a two-way contract. The Spurs waived Stanley Johnson to give him a full deal. He's been great, I think, in his minutes. But, Michelle, forget what I think. I want to hear your scouting report on this kid. Is he deserving of $10 million on a new contract? I want to hear what you have to say. I mean, look, at this point, it's all Monopoly money, right? I, I, I'm genuinely happy for the kid. He's been going back and forth from, from the Spurs to the G League. We don't have Pirtle anymore, so obviously you need a big guy. He is a big guy. And I will say he's young. They're all young. My God, I'm a grandma. Um, but I will say this. Every second that he's gotten the opportunity to play out there on the NBA court, he has tried so hard, and he has hustled his butt off. And so when, this, when you dropped this bomb last night, I was in my room just like – Oh, like a proud mom that has no relation to anybody. Uh, so it's very weird, but I'm I'm happy for him. And and the kid hustles, so I'm sure. I hope he buys himself something nice. That's all I that's all I want to know. Uh Shams, it's your Friday. Who am I kidding? You're not gonna go do anything fun. You're gonna keep working. Go go enjoy yourself. <laughs> do something crazy so we can hear about it on Monday. <laughs> Who are we Appreciate kidding, guys? That. Oh, but you 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 stay. It's time for a little are you buying that? We start things off with the wizards. And the Blazers. Now, hear me out. We're going to go all over the place on this. The Wizards did beat the Blazers by 25. Kuzma had 33, and he's coming back from the ankle sprain. So their big three, Kuzma, Porzingis, Beal. Are you buying that they are bigger and better than Chicago's DeRozan, Levine, and Vucevic? Chandler, are you first? Uh, yeah, I am. I actually, and I, I haven't been big on them all year long, but... First of all, they're younger, uh, and, and I think the team around them isn't as good, and these guys have really, really played well this year. Kuzma has really taken a leap, and he's earned himself a huge paycheck this year. Przingis is kind of doing it all for these guys, and he's making shots. He's playing big, and Bradley Beal, everything with his con – is he leaving? Is he staying? He finally got the contract. He's staying there. Uh, he did push a ref the other day, but I love Bradley Gale. He, you know, he's one of the greatest shooters in the league. He doesn't get enough reps. He doesn't get talked about as like he should. But this big three is solid. And this, it's just tough because you look around the league. Other teams are so much better. Other duos are better. Um, and the, for whatever reason, this Chicago Bulls – trio just hasn't worked out it's it's, it's kind of it's clogged up in the paint demar DeRozan's kind of the last of the mid-range you know kind of go get a long two jump shots um and to me the biggest thing if i'm looking now and for the future the wizards they're much younger than this threesome as well yeah i'm, I'm with chandler for much of the same reasons i also think the bulls have the worst of the six players with, with vucevic not to say that there's this massive gap between him and porzingis but I just think Porzingis is better. He's younger. He works harder on defense. That dunk that was just shown on that clip, that was insane. Like, that was absurd. I thought this segment was about the dunk. But, yeah, I'm going with the Wizards <laughs> big three by a pinch. I like the potential of Kuzma as well. And, and, look, Zach Levine hasn't been what they've wanted him to be this year. He's coming off a major knee injury, obviously. DeMar DeRozan is aging. He is what he is. And Aww. he's getting to the point where he's almost overpaid with that contract. So, yeah, give me the Wizards big three. But when Porzingis and Kuz get that those deals this summer, circle back. I might change my mind. They might be a little too expensive after that. Mm, see, money changes it all every single time. On the other side of things, Blazers, right now they're 11th in the West. They're a half game behind the Jazz. Eddie, are you buying that Dame can carry his team into the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think they're going to make it. I, I think they're a little bit better than the Jazz, and, and I think they're a little more battle-tested as well. I, I, a lot of that lays with Jeremy Grant and, and – some of the pickups they made in the at the deadline. Um, also, there's also that hanging thread that like the Jazz just kind of want to lose, like they just do after All Star Weekend. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's get ready for the draft. Um, but yeah, I, I'm buying the Blazers by just a test. Look, it's only half a game. They they should be able to handle that. That's fair. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. They're right there. They're basically neck and neck with the Thunder, who I think they're a much better team, and I do think they're better than the Jazz. I think they're even they can compete with the Pelicans and the Timberwolves the way these guys have guys in and out of the lineup. Uh, and Dame Lillard is playing unbelievable, and, and Jeremy Grant's had a great year. Anthony Simons has kind of thrived in this second fiddle 
uh, role. And, and again, if it was a, if it was four or five games, I would say no. But it, anything could happen. They are they are two and a half games, three games back of, of actually not even having to play in the play. in so, yeah, I, I'm taking Dame and the, and the Blazers getting in there and possibly even making some noise. OK, all right. Magic Raptors. We got a little Raptors news. Uh, they beat Orlando Hurdle. All right. Back in Toronto uniform, scores 30. Siakam with 26. Van Vliet with 15 assists. Um, Play-in spot-wise, they're right now they're sitting at 28-21 in ninth place, Chandler. Are you buying their chances of keeping that spot? Yeah, same thing for the for the Blazers. I think they're good enough to kind of tread water right there, and I do think they're better than the Wizards, better than the Bulls, better than the Pacers, better than the Magic. So I don't I don't see any of those teams kind of jumping them. I did I like the additions they made, and this is a team that I thought was going to be a lot better. Maybe it's just taking them a lot longer, and they hit their stride kind of like the Hawks did a couple years ago after after All Star break. And again, they have the talent, they have the shooting, they have the defensive capability. So I, I think the Raptors are. are pretty safe bet to be in and maybe not even in the plan again there's no reason they can't sneak in there and, and, and kind of get ahead of the Knicks get ahead of the Hawks yeah I think I think they're definitely going to get ahead of the Hawks I think they're solidified here and I actually think they're going to win in the plan they're going to get into the playoffs and look unfortunately then they got to play the Celtics or the Bucks but I I think they're a better team than they've displayed all year they've had the looming cloud of the trade deadline hanging over them and now everybody's here now everybody's locked in and and now they can focus on the mission at hand. And, yeah, I got them in. They're, like Chandler said, they're better than the teams that are behind them. I actually think they're better than a couple of teams that are ahead of them. So I look at, I look at them and holding their spot, and, and they should be able to win a do-or-die play-in game. A little stability perhaps will help them out now that no one's going anywhere, at least for the time being. All right, Orlando, as far as all the current lottery teams right now, Eddie, do you think that Orlando Magic squad has the most upside? Um, yeah, because I think they have the best young player in the league, you know, the best rookie in the league. But but the lottery is so weird now, right? There's only like six teams in the lottery at, at the moment. I, I, I think the Thunder, if they end up being in the lottery, mm-hmm. they're the other team I would look to because they have guys like Shea who is entering his prime and is already that great. He's an all-star. And then you have Josh Giddy who continues to show – and Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren is like the the American Victor Wembanyama, who's just sitting there waiting to look amazing the in the league. And yeah, so like I, I would go with the Thunder if they're technically in there, but if not, the Magic are right behind them. Chandler. Uh, yeah. yeah, I agree. I think it's the Thunder though by far. I think the SGA is an actual star. I love Josh Giddy. They have all the, the both of the Jalen Williams are solid players, and they do have Chet Holmgren who's sitting over there who hasn't played one possession and if they are in the if they are in the lottery they're going to get another good pick and they're going to continue to build uh so yeah i think it's i think it's the thunder the magic are right there besides that it's it, there, there's no one really else with that good of a future i don't really love houston's future uh it's the magic or the thunder for me well we'll see we'll come back to that uh, in a year uh up next we've got dunks from last night and we will give our picks in this year's amazing slam dunk contest when Run It Back returns. Comes Durant, now he's doubled. Walker finally sees Nas, now to sharp in the corner. Right, let's go, let's go. Ball let's go. Tra- oh my goodness! Shaded Sharp cocks it back and hammers it down. Gravity knows no bounds for Shaden. Shaden Sharp hammers it down. Blazers trail by 23. Going on the floor, it's a successful three. I, I feel like at this point, these are just mean because it's what could have been. It's like a tease. Um, is it too late, Chandler, for him to just throw him in the game so he'll do the slam dunk contest? Like, what can we do here? How do we fix this? <laughs> I think the only thing we can do is have an injury in the game and have him maybe replace someone in the Rising Stars game, and then, <laughs> and, and then he's going there that weekend anyways. But no, nah, I think his feelings are hurt, and oh. it's a shame because this kid, he's a sure thing. He flies, and yeah. he's basically showing us every single night he's doing some dunk like this, just reminding us that you mm-hmm. idiots should have me in the Rising Stars game, and I would have done things like this and made the dunk contest cool. He really I, is like winning thank, right now. No, I'd like to thank Taj Gibson. Like, he's a vet. Uh, he, he's he's an OG in the game. 
He knows damn well that closeout was awful. Like, he, it was almost like he was trying to give us that dunk. So thank you, Taj. I appreciate it. It's really sad. It really saddens me that Shaden's not going to be in this dunk contest. And it, if it's really as petty as they didn't put him in the rookie sophomore game, he's oh. right. That's the worst part. He absolutely should have been in it. This this is frustrating. I, I, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm sorry. You say petty. I say completely justified. Uh, why would I go all the way to Salt Lake for seven <laughs> minutes of work when I can also show off everything else? But I also love how he's, do he's like giving us these dunks now every night since he decided to pull himself out. And it's like. Oh, he's just playing the game. I love it so much. All right. Um, it, it is our last show before All-Star Weekend, so why not make some picks um, in these exact contests that we're talking about? Chandler, I'm going to start with you. Who's winning the dunk contest? Who's in it? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go with – Jesus. I'm going to go with uh, – <laughs> I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with Martin Jr., Huh. Kenyon, Kenyon Martin, Martin Jr. Kenyon I mean, Martin why Jr. are you saying that yeah. like it's in another language? Just act like no, it's never because seen I that honestly, name. I honestly forgot the names. I didn't know they were up there. Uh, yeah, I like Kenyon Martin Jr. He's bouncy. And he's left-handed. I like that. I think he's if he's anything like his dad, he's gonna show us something. That's fair. And he's got some All right. Uh, in the game. I'm, he, I'm he going has, Kmart yes, as well. Eddie. I'm going Kmart. Is this okay. look? I'll I'll do respect to Trey Murphy and to Mac McClung, but like I'm not sure why they're there. I've seen Trey Murphy dunk in games and it's like yo, he's a tall guy with long arms. He, he's, he should be in a three-point contest yeah. if anything. But yeah, I think it's between Shaden Sharp and Jericho Sims. And if Jericho Sims actually jumps up there and like bites the rim like he can, he might win it. But I'm going with Kmart. It's just Trey, Trey Murphy's a shooter. Uh, Sims is a big, and McClung has a blue coat's jersey on. I get <laughs> process of elimination. That's why I, he's my pick. Matt, Matt McClung is my pick for chaos and chaos alone. Because then, yeah. the, then the theories will start. Plus, it's just funny. Like the whole thing is funny to me. Um, all right, three point contest, Eddie. Some some bigger names in this one, I guess you could argue. Who are you picking here? Bobby, I'm going Kevin Herter, and I. And I looked at the I looked at the odds yesterday, and he was like the um, the biggest underdog. I'm, I had to put my bet down because I'm going Kevin Herter. He's just a pure shooter, and, and these are the kind of guys who live for this type of moment. Kevin Herter is never going to participate in All Star Weekend again. So capitalize, <laughs> my guy, Red oh. Velvet. Bring it home to sack. Make Peja proud. Peja is a two time winner, I believe, one of the greatest pure shooters ever. I'm going Herter. What you got, Chandler? Uh, red Velvet. I, like, I like the Red Rocket. I like Damian. I like Damian Lillard. He's got the most experience here. He's shot the most threes. He's going to be the most calm. It's not going to get to him. Uh, and I honestly mm -hmm. think he's one of the greatest shooters of all time. And we don't talk about that enough. But what is he? Plus 470 odds? Yeah, give me him. He's the best shooter in the competition. Oh, nope. Huh. Nobody's I taking think he the gets favorite. A four That's point shot to too. They had the they had the long shot last year, right? So I think Dame gets that, and you know that's his money. So yeah. I like that. Pick. He hits those. All right, that's fair. Uh, I yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, the skills challenge, Chandler. I'd like to see on your face how excited you are for that. Uh, I didn't prepare <laughs> myself for this. I don't know who's in it. Uh, the skills. This is there. You go. Dribble. We gave you a screen. This is where they dribble. Yes, and they, they pass dribble. And they make the shot. <laughs> Oh, those are their team. <laughs> yeah, you know those what? are the teams. So you get the, yeah. <laughs> not Go the on. top team. Not the top team. I don't know who's going to make the jumper on the top team there. Give me the bottom. <laughs> I like the Rooks. You know what? The Rooks, they're going to try the hardest. Jaden Ivey is going to go the fastest. They have a little bit of handling, a little passing, <laughs> a little shooting. I, I really like Team Rooks winning this one. Oh, you really? Oh, I'm sorry. You went from who's in it to you really like Team Rooks. Now that, so I, saw the, now that I saw the field, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm all in on Team Rooks. Well, the, the brothers on to won last year, if it matters. Good to know. I'm going to be taking a break while this is on. But I'm going to go with the onto to no. because nobody tries harder it meaningless That's... things than the Giannis family, <laughs> oh, the Yanta wow. Kumpo family. I'm sorry. Giannis. So, like, <laughs> the ultimate tryhards, all due respect to them, like, go get this trophy for the second time. They've <laughs> essentially made it a group of, a group event for them. So weird. Go, go, go do it. Like, I'll, I'll be somewhere 
doing something else. Something. <laughs> you know what, Potty break. You know what's crazy? I did this. I did this one year, and I it was you so. Did? I did, and it was so boring, and it was just <laughs> horrendous. But I wait. Did who'd it. you do we it? We gotta get footage. I did it. It was like I did it, and there was a, in Houston, and there was a WNBA player, and then there was a legend. Oh, I remember this. Like me, Cheryl Swoops, and Kenny Smith, where you had to do oh, a little yeah. bit of. Which I remember when was, they did that configuration. Yeah. We I don't hate that configuration. Did you, we didn't win. Did you even did you even sweat? Did you even have to shower after? Or did you go put your outfit on and like get back to Saturday? I was sweating tequila, most likely. Nice. That <laughs> okay. behind yeah. the scenes, ladies and gentlemen, you can only no, get here. You don't sweat. <laughs> All right, there you go. We got that man has a family. Yay, yay, yay. All right, we'll start things off with Mr. Siakam. Oh, okay. Mm. His, his family's literally down. on his team. His family. <laughs> Yeah, I think he stepped that, on I his think that's, foot. Right? That's been is, happening. Is that Mo Wagner? Yeah, I yes. think that's Mo. But the lesser Wagner uh, brother. That, like, how many oh, times? Mild. We, like, he'll be fine. Yeah, we get them. But how about this? We return the favor. Bo -bo. Yeah, he got him back. Yeah. God, nice, little, just... nice little rip through. I like this. A game that surely seven people watched, but they got to see these cool moves. It is <laughs> fun to watch him. People. It is fun to watch him play when he does things like this at his size and his length. It's 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 impressive. just mesmer. It's it's actually mesmerizing. It like my eyes don't understand anything. Uh, Markel folks uh, on precious. That's some highlights in this huh. game. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Was there <laughs> no any more. other games or? Just... By the way, Markel's been sneakily <laughs> doing a lot of things like this and having a lot of highlights. Yeah. Feeling Number good. one overall pick, man. He's showing the flashes. Mm. Yep. Probably, uh, yeah. Bradley Beal on Drew Banks. Well, I mean, yeah. that, was, that was never going to work. <laughs> and he taps the head afterwards. Oh, yeah. So that is, that's hurtful. <laughs> Fresh off. We reached the. We, we, we got our, our white guy getting dunked on quota for yeah, today. Of it's, we've yet to miss on this one. This is no, nice. We're, the, we're so woke. Where's the, <laughs> where's the left at, Brad? Where's the left? There's no left hand. Like, what's up? <laughs> oh, we are going to take a break. Um, and when we come back, we will try and help you make money with our parlay picks. Get you into the weekend rich. Run it up. They're running back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. With the NBA's best taking the court in Salt Lake City for All-Star Weekend, why just watch? Well, you can earn a share of $10,000 in cash prizes when you enter the Rising Stars Pick'em Challenge, delivered with DoorDash on FanDuel. All you have to do is to enter is answer 10 questions about this Friday's Rising Stars Challenge. The more you get right, the more you can win. Enter for free on FanDuel.com today. I am stoked for that game. Okay. Uh, wow, I hate to do this, but Chandler, you once again are the only one that got it right yesterday. How you feeling? <laughs> Like clockwork these days. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I love that mine again plus eight, and they lost by ten. Like I, I this is almost comical. Yeah, You've had point. some bad beats, Michelle. Yeah, I'm really not good at this at all. <laughs> but that does not mean we stop trying, kids. Because if we can learn from this, we can make it better for tonight. Eddie, talk to me. What do you have? <laughs> Uh, look, I missed mine by 25 points yesterday. <laughs> I, I'm going the Knicks with the points versus the Hawks. I think they're the better team. Uh, they won't be chanting F. Trey Young in, in Atlanta, but they'll be mm -hmm. playing like it. So I'm going with the Knicks. Okay. Knicks getting love from Eddie. Weird. Chandler. Uh, I like the Sixers <laughs> minus two and a half over the Cavs. I did see Joel Embiid was game time decision, which that's obviously going <laughs> to that's gonna hurt my pick that's there. That's kind but, of a big one. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I took the Nuggets the other night with no Aaron Gordon and Jamal Murray, and they still got it done. So it's my week. It is your week. And I don't even know why I'm bothering to do this, but I picked the easiest, smallest possible differential I could. So I've got heat <laughs> plus one. <laughs> like that. I really am like, I don't even know why. And that 20 bucks went 122. We're going to do our best for you guys. Oh, I cannot believe it. it's finally All Star Weekend. You guys, are we having all-star parties? Are we watching alone on our couches? What are we doing? <laughs> I can't Eddie? say I have anything I planned. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> yeah. oh, I will not be in Utah. Good oh, luck. No. You'll be in will. Utah? 
No. Uh, by Great. the way, I didn't mean to say it like that. Uh, programming note: <laughs> next week and the following, we will be on one hour later, which means 11 a.m. Eastern. Enjoy the festivities.